Hi folks, right, a, uh, a simple misty scene, a bit of distance, a bit of a low horizon, so it's a bank coming up here and a, another one there, and a bit of Trees coming up off the bank. Just walking through a wood. Oh, I've got a cramp in my finger. God, do you ever get pants? Oh. I might have to stop. Uh, and then we'll. I want these trees to be lighter than these silhouetted, usual dark ones. Okay, now this we can make this a sort of a muddy path coming through here. A bit more flat. Okay, that that will do. So, give my plates out. It's a lovely day in London, after a weekend of cloud, warmer, warmer than it has been of late. Uh, right, I've got a new hake here, or oh, new on Saturday, well I've had it some months but it's pointless buying one when you need two. I've just had one as a stab, I've got so many worn out hakes or half worn out. Uh, right, here we are. Uh, cadmium yellow, raw sienna, uh, lizard and crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, paint spray, burnt sienna. And where am I cramping finger? Oh. I've just done one, but the trees were just too dark. So I'm going to wet the paper all over. Right, it's okay, now we'll put in a bit of a background of a bit of blue, a bit of ultramarine, oh no, it's a bit of sienna over the whole lot, just to warm it up. I'm not, the sky is going to be mostly covered up. This hake has a tendency to, to split, so we have to work at that. Dip it in the, some wet on the palette and just bring the bristles back together again. Okay, so because it's going to be a misty scene, you won't see much sky other than just a, a general light. So a bit of, bit of, uh, bit of blue, with a bit of, uh, bit of um, ultramarine in. Okay, that'll do. And we'll go into that with some burnt, burnt umber and some Payne's grey, but on the blue side. Now remember, whatever you put on dries a lot lighter. Some on the other side. Now I hope that those tones do separate. This one darker. Let's just make it a little bit more darker. A little more dark. Oh God, God. I might have to stop and give up. Okay, that'll do. 
while it's wet you can do whatever you like on it. Let's just put in some of this background reflection. And we can we can put some foliage, some mud and stuff in there when that dries off a bit. I'm just going to reclip the paper. If I uh, sound a little bit hoarse, so I've had a few nights without much sleep, coughing away, trying to get over that oil solvent, oil brush cleaner which I thought was non-toxic <coughs> and it turned out to be very highly toxic and it's affecting me. So I'm being investigated for all sorts of th things. My doc, he said to me, I think, now I've got you Dave, I'm not going to let you go. Right, let's, well that's a, just lift out a few. No, you can't do this if you bite your nails. We we'll cover up some of that, but uh, <coughs> all right. Let's put in a bit of warmer stuff here. A bit of burnt sienna, just soften a bit. God, sorry about all the grumps and. I'm just putting in some warm this bank here. I'm really struggling here. Okay. Another hand. I've got a friend who's a very fine artist, went to art school many years ago and he had a very bad stroke some years ago and has to, he's very limited with his wrong hand. I'll just get a bit of, bit of yellow in there. This is cadmium yellow light that I'm using and I don't like it. I like the cadmium medium which was very very nice. It'd be a much stronger colour than this one. Right, look at some mud in there. Too blue. I'm trying to create the impression of, <coughs> oh, yeah, of wet. I can do that probably by just putting putting down some reflections in that. So that I don't want to do much more than that. I want to get something here though. Just some texture on this, or the both banks. Right, 
Right, now I want uh, some Payne's Grey and Cadmium Yellow light to do some trees now. I always have a lump of cloth handy. Okay, let's get one coming up here. This is much easier to work on than the <coughs> the Windsor & Newton 90 pound rough, believe it or not. It's, it's a different paper entirely. The Even the not cold, hot pressed paper is quite rough. It was the, the greeny colour I wanted in this. Trying to get the, the, the twists that you get where, where the branches break as they go along. For example, oops, that. So it looks like it kinks rather than they're just a complete symmetrical shape. It won't be. Because you can make your trees as elaborate as you like, mine are just sketches, impressions. Let's just get some yellow in there. Okay, we can put in some slightly more. Mm, cut my grass on Saturday. That's where we can exploit the, the shadow, the uh, well, just to create that illusion of something going on. Now I want to bury those. Let's do some of the other side. So with the hake you can put these in very, very quickly and loosely and it gives that impressionist look that would be very difficult to do with a with a rigger. Oh, I wouldn't even try it with a rigger. The trouble is with the rig, if you mix the techniques it looks a bit obvious. Still waiting for this brush to... It's, it's so new. I'll just get that bit of yellow on that side. Thank you. 
that yellow look. Fill in the gaps with some sketchy trees. All right, let's exploit. Uh, I'll do it with the rig, I think. The Try to get your reflections more or less underneath. Right, let's bury there. Actually, being misty, you wouldn't see a lot of shadow, but I'll, or because the, 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 the light, the, the light is everywhere, not just concentrated one area in a misty scene. Right, let's uh, find my little little brush. We we'll put a figure in. We'll make it blue. On brush. That's the one. There's a lovely sort of rigger. It's a number five Windsor and Newton rigger. Very nice brush. I haven't found a lot of use for it within a ball too. Right, you go here. Okay, well you can see him. Try not to make him too skimpy. He's behind a bit of undergrowth there. So that's all I really want to do with that. I'll give it a signature. And then we'll put in a mount. Make it grey. Right, mount. Oh. Uh. Okay, so there we are. Quite happy with that. Uh, so we've got a distant stuff in the background, walking into the mist. Uh, figure, well, the figure seems to have sort of grown a bit on his leg there, must have been wet. Uh, some light being caught in the puddles as we come into the, go into the picture through the path. Um, if I was to put another figure in there, beyond him, which I might do. Um, now, your eye line. Where is your eye line? Is your eye line there? 
or there. So we'll have the, the whole eye line there, or maybe just slightly lower, and we'll put another little figure lower down. But you will find that the legs will go up. So there we are, so we've got two figures in there. Oh, that's bleached out now, I've lifted too much out of it. Okay, we'll let that go. So we've got two figures, one in front of the other slightly, but it doesn't look it. The one, he, he, the one on the left is the one nearest, the one beyond, the head's lower, so the horizon will be there. So all the heads would go there, but the feet would go up. Well, actually, the heads will go down to the eye line. Uh, so the eye line, these eye lines there, yeah, that's okay. I just want to dry that off, then I can just put his coat a little bit darker on one side. Right, okay, so the dark bit in. Okay, that'll do. Got his coat on. It's just a little bit out there, that's where a little bit of a way. But I don't think I, it, was, it started off good, I'll uh, just dry it off. I wanted, I wanted to get the gap between his legs. Right, now a bit tissue. I think those of you who know me well enough know that I'm not a lover of lifting out clouds with uh, with a, a tissue. It just looks too contrived and it's overused. I think that's my opinion. And I'll just put a little gap there. I made him look a bit pregnant, didn't I? Oh well, I'll let that go. You could get bogged down in that sort of thing. Thanks for watching folks. See you soon. Bye bye.